Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of John, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to read selected verses from the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. Um, I'm going to focus on how Jesus interacted with her as a stranger, so I'm not going to read the entire story, although I encourage you to read it all because it is a really good story. So he let, and why don't we rise in respect for the gospel, please. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that J Jacob gave his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Now then they go on to have a conversation about water and living water, as Beth talked about, uh, about worship places and other things. And then the woman says, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Thus ends this reading of God's holy word. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We're in the midst of a sermon series called I See You. And we've been looking at the biblical witness as it pertains to people who are different than we are. God creates, knows, loves, and sees all of us in our full humanity. And while we share a common humanity, we tend to make assumptions about one another. And these assumptions can be harmful and prevent us from truly seeing other people and empathizing with them. During this season, we've been looking at biblical stories, this series, we've been looking at biblical stories in order to learn how to listen to, respect, affirm, and act for and with others. So today, I want to talk about how we should see and interact with strangers. Often, when we see strangers, we make snap judgments and assumptions about them. These assumptions can make, them make us unwilling to approach them and get to know them. These assumptions can arise from cultural differences, from stereotypes, or from misinformation that we have about them. So today we are going to use the story of the Samaritan woman at the well to see how Jesus treated strangers. His actions give us a template we can use when we encounter strangers 
and show us that everyone deserves our respect. Now, to fully understand the significance of this story, we have to put it into context. Jesus was living in first century Palestine. And at that time, the Jewish and Samaritan people groups were enemies. Uh, this centuries-long rift had gotten worse when the Samaritans chose a holy place of worship that differed from the Jewish holy place of worship. So the Jewish people stayed away from Samaritans because they didn't want to risk becoming contaminated by people who worshiped God differently. In addition, the person Jesus encountered at the well was not just a Samaritan, she was a woman. Jewish custom at the time discouraged men from initiating conversation or any contact with an unknown woman. Thus, Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman at the well violated two important social norms of the day. He was talking to a woman he didn't know, and she was part of a people group that was considered enemy, enemies. So him having a conversation with her at all is astonishing. But there are other unique aspects to this story that make it even more remarkable. The things that Jesus said and did and the lengths he went to to have this conversation can be a guide for us on how we should treat strangers. So let's look at the four things Jesus did and how we can emulate him. First, the text said that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Now, geographically, that is correct. He was in Judea, and he was going to Galilee. And the best way to get there was right through Samaria. Okay. But pious Jewish people did not go through Samaria. They would take the long way around to avoid going through this area uh, where they might risk contact with the unclean Samaritans. Yet Jesus chose to go through Samaria, this land filled with strangers who were reviled by his people. He didn't buy into the stereotype that these people were unclean, evil, or outside of God's love. He consciously chose to travel a route that gave him the opportunity to interact with the Samaritans. Now, if we follow Jesus' example, we will not avoid the places where strangers are, particularly ones that society or religious people shun. We will seek out opportunities to interact with people who are different than we are. For example, we may visit inmates in prison, talk to homeless people on the street, go to the Pride Festival next weekend, or shop at a Middle Eastern grocery store. However it occurs, we will put ourselves in places where these interactions can happen. Second, Jesus spoke to the woman first. He initiated the contact, even though social convention said he should just ignore her presence. As I said earlier, in this context, his speaking to her was radical. It was a radical breach of social norms because she was both a Samaritan and a woman. And we just read how shocked she was that he spoke to her. But by starting the conversation with her, Jesus acknowledged her humanity and showed her that she was a person of value somebody that he noticed. If we follow Jesus' example, we will 
initiate contact with strangers in order to get to know them as people. We can wish our Muslim co-workers Ramadan Mubarak and make sure to recognize their holy days. We can offer to buy a homeless person lunch and listen to their story. We can genuinely compliment the tattoo or hair color of the sales clerk that checks us out at the grocery store or ask them how they're doing. By noticing people we tend to ignore or overlook, we acknowledge that they are valuable human beings created in the image of God. Third, even at the outset of the conversation, before Jesus had gotten to know her at all, Jesus says to this woman, if you only knew the gift God has for you. He is showing the inclusiveness of God's love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness with that sentence. He is telling her and us that God's gift of love is unrestricted. It doesn't matter who you are, where, you, where you're from, what you've done or haven't done, God loves you and wants a relationship with you. God's abundance is not limited. With this interaction, we see God incarnate, offering himself to those whom society deems unacceptable. To follow Jesus in this respect, we can start stop trying to limit God's love. God loves and wants a relationship with everybody, no exceptions. So we should love everyone too and not seek to erect barriers that make some people feel that they are beyond God's love. This type of love is active. So when we truly love others, we will do things that manifest that love. We will seek to make sure that all people are treated equitably and are not discriminated against. That means that we should take our love of God out into the world and our love of others should be something that people see. We can take it into the voting booth with us. We can vote for candidates who seek to ensure that all people in our state and in our nation are treated well. And we will seek policies that improve the lives of the disadvantaged and discriminated against because they are all beloved children of God. Fourth, Jesus talks to this Samaritan woman and interacts with her as a peer. He doesn't condescend to her. He doesn't belittle her. He tells her about her life, but he doesn't chastise her for it or condemn her. He just talks to her like she deserves his time and attention because she does. He recognizes that she is made in the image of God and is a beloved child of God, worthy of love and respect. That level of care, of being noticed, gives her courage because Jesus Christ acknowledged her innate worth. She is then able to see herself in a new way. This newfound perspective gives her courage the courage to seek out the townspeople that she had been avoiding by coming to the well in the middle of the day. After just a brief talk with Jesus, she has the courage to go into town and tell the townspeople to come and meet Jesus, who might be the long-awaited Messiah. Thus, she becomes a very effective evangelist and a whole town of Samaritans believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the savior of the world. Because the townspeople's encounter with Jesus led to faith, 
Jesus' disciples learned that salvation was not exclusive to the Jewish people. They learned that God's love is not limited by ethnic or religious distinctions, that salvation is universally available to all. It's a lesson we Christians are still trying to understand today because we still want to categorize people. However, for God, there are no categories. No chosen or rejected people. God does not give priority to any particular gender, nationality, or socioeconomic level. God sees us all the same as beloved children. So to follow Jesus' example, we can see all people as beloved children of God who are deserving of God's love and grace. We can see each and every person as our peer who deserves our respect and attention. This perspective encourages us to embody God's love for the marginalized by trying to ensure that they are valued and respected as they should be. This means that we should swing open our doors and expand our tables so that everyone has food, clothing, housing, and respect. And this type of respect and attention will empower people empower those who are marginalized, just like it empowered the Samaritan woman. My friends, if we fully inhabit and live into this passage and emulate Jesus' actions, we will begin to turn the world upside down and inside out. The Holy Spirit, God living in us, gives us this ability. Now, we may think that the little things that we could do are just a drop in the bucket compared to all the problems of the world. But God can take our small offerings and multiply them, just like God did with the loaves and the fishes. To paraphrase Mother Teresa, all good changes in the world come from normal people doing small things with great love. We should never underestimate the power of love in action. Jesus Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection showed us God's love incarnate and how powerful that is. We are the recipients of that love. And as we fully feel God's love for us, we, want, we will want to share it with everyone we meet not just our friends, but strangers too. We will show them the love and respect they deserve, just like Jesus did. Thanks be to God.